In this episode, let's go back to the Panasonic GH4 and we're gonna look at its dynamic range. And specifically, we're gonna compare it to the Nikon D600, which is a full frame DSLR. Check this out. Let's start off first by saying that cameras really are nothing more than tools. Everyone has their preferences. I'm not suggesting this is the ultimate camera, the right camera for everyone. Um, I'm just showing you what I'm finding in relation to my previous camera. And uh, I think it's actually a pretty good fit for me. May or may not be a good fit for you. Let's just take a look at the dynamic range here. Now, those of you that have been on the channel for a while know that I have in the past shot with an Nikon D600. It is, a, um, it is not the most awesome camera for video, but the reason I have done that is that I'm primarily a photographer in terms of my paying gigs and it's a great camera for still photography. So um, it does have some issues. It doesn't have a lot of video features. It's clear that Nikon didn't pour a lot into the video functionality of that particular camera. It was really set up as a stills camera and then they just kind of tossed in video to go along with it. Um, but it's a great camera. On the um, still side, DxO, if you go to DxO, I'll put a link for it down below, as actually does some pretty in-depth analysis of different camera sensors and their dynamic range. And dynamic range is how much uh, in detail can a camera maintain in the darkest shadows and the brightest brights. So uh, in the case of the Nikon D600 on the still side, when they shoot in RAW, it's capturing about 14 stops of dynamic range, which is really quite good for a a digital camera. Um, so um, on the other hand, the Panasonic GH4 capture, they, they recently just put out the results for those tests and they're finding somewhere in the 12.8 stops range. So it is technically less than the Nikon when you're shooting stills in RAW. And the question is, how does that translate into video? Because you're not necessarily going to capture all of that in video as well. So we did a, just a quick test here and this is just a quick comparison. It's not scientific. So I understand that. Um, this is just sort of a practical comparison. I put the two cameras on a tripod, uh, pointed it at the setting sun on a mountain. Um, so we exposed for the highlights so I could keep as much of the highlights as I could and still also see some detail in the shadows on the mountain. And this is what we got. And in both cases, I'm using a flat profile or a flat picture style or flat settings, depending on the camera. So in the case of the Nikon, I'm using the FLAAT flat picture style. And on the Panasonic, I'm using the settings that I'm showing you here on the screen. So um, they're definitely both flat profiles. So you're going to expect a little bit more dynamic range or perceived dynamic range, at least, than uh, you might normally, and you know, just straight out of the, the box with the standard settings. So, but what I'm seeing here is it seems like if I look at the parade scopes after I bring those the footage in, um, and in both cases I'm shooting with the codec in the camera. So this is all 420 8-bit color. Um, it's not, you know, this is really kind of consumer video, to be honest. But what I'm seeing here is that with the, the profiles that I've set up on the GH4 versus the Nikon, I'm able to re retain a little bit more information in the details in the sky in the brightest parts. So, um, and they both, in terms of shadows, look about the same. So it, it feels like with the Panasonic, you have a little bit more flexibility to kind of fine tune the, the settings to really capture the dynamic range that you need for a particular case. Here, I'm also, uh, my family and I went to Dinosaur National Park, or National Monument, excuse me, and we went inside the structure where they have a bunch of the bones exposed in the rock. And what I did is here is I actually shot a couple of uh, just clips really quickly with um, exposed again, so I could capture the highlights outdoors and also maintain some of the detail in the shadows indoors. So this is just the Panasonic GH4. And so for me, for all practical purposes, this is really great. I mean, this is this is enough for what I need to do in most cases. Um, and I think in terms of dynamic range, it's doing really, really well, especially up against the Nikon D600, which is a full frame. Just for comparison's sake, the uh, DxO rated the Canon 5D Mark III, which is a very uh, obviously a very popular DSR for video, rated its dynamic range at 11.7 stops. So it's actually technically shooting raw stills. Um, DxO is saying that it has less dynamic range than even the Panasonic GH4. So just some information. Um, again, I'm not saying the Panasonic GH4 is the ultimate camera for everyone, um, but just to kind of put it in perspective, I'm finding that even with that relatively small sensor, the micro four thirds sensor, that the Panasonic GH4 does pretty well in terms of dynamic range. And for practical purposes, um, for my type of shooting, it's plenty for the, the types of things that I do. So 
Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for checking out today's show. If you have not subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.